sure you guys are all too familiar with the feeling of when you don't make a video for like a week and then all of a sudden you're like, man, I haven't made a video in a while. People probably hate me. The algorithm hates me. It's just, you know, nothing's going to work in your favor from that, you know, point on. Whatever. The the qualms of YouTube stuff. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I have here kind of a couple things going on. I'm going to be talking about some stuff that I've read. I'm also going to be showing off um, some stuff added into the collection and then also doing kind of a mini Severin showcase. Um, things have been a little busy. If you don't follow me on Instagram, um, Erica and I actually got married a couple of days ago. So we got that going on. It's been busy. It's been crazy. Haven't really been buying too much. Uh, we've just been kind of spending the past few days off doing things that we want to do and then more stuff this weekend. But currently in New Jersey, it is almost 100 degrees outside. So it's been a little bit of a struggle, just a little bit. But I'm just going to jump right in and just show off a couple of these things. So first, I'm going to go off. I'm going to go over just a couple things that I've been reading, and I've been really making a conscious effort to start reading again. I used to be a huge reader when I was a kid, and it was something that, as I got older, I feel like my attention span kind of changed, and it made things a little bit more difficult. Um, now in my thirties, I just kind of get tired when I read. So I haven't been reading as much at night, but I try to take some time during the day to read. And I've always been a fan of, I guess, what's called like extreme horror or extreme novels. Um, I have a couple, but I picked up one that was recently re-released. If, if I remember correctly, um, it was, I think, re-edited, maybe, and then re-put out. But this is a book by Brian G. Berry. This is Hooker Massacre in Trash City. So that's the cover there of it. It's got this really cool, like, 99-cent sticker up there. And there's just the back of it. And I, got, I bought this off Amazon. He actually posted it on his Instagram um, that it was re-released. It was either on his page or in his stories. I shot on Amazon real quick. I picked it up. I think the paperback was like $8.99 or something. So I'll link that down below. Uh, but this is only a hundred and 161 pages. So it was a quick read. I got it done in a couple of days. But um, this was really cool. This is kind of like a very... It's, 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 it's like a pulp noir. Um, but it really kind of adds that... There's extreme elements in the violence and in the content... Um, and it kind of mixes in this little horror sci-fi element to it. Uh, and it tells the story of this private detective who, um, when a prostitute shows up at his office and tells him about some of the shady stuff going on uh, that intermixes with a case he's already been working on. This is kind of like the break that he needed, the info he needed. Um, it leads him to getting to the bottom of some things that he's really been curious about. And at 161 pages, the, the, the book does a great job of covering the whole entire story really well. One thing I was worried about was biting off more than can be chewed and not being able to complete all of the storylines and really complete everything at bay. But it did a great job. And the third act here has a floor-by-floor -floor shootout that's like probably one of the most intense and violent ever put on paper before. I was really shocked. Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling it was building up to this, 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 uh, this conflict to the shootout, uh, and then when it goes down, it really, really, really goes down. Uh, so I'll link this down below. Brian G. Berry, he's a big name in the space. I have a couple of his books, so I'll be covering these a little bit more here on the channel as well as over on my Instagram as well. But that's what I recently read: Hooker Massacre and Trash City. Great title. Great title. And then I also wanted to um, talk about this here. This is Horror Hound issue 101. I've been a big fan um, of Horror Hound lately. When I picked up issue, I've had a couple like various issues over the last couple of years. Um, but I picked up issue 100, which covered Evil Dead. Uh, they did a, a retrospective on the first Evil Dead in that one. They had a, a, a great Video Nasties article. Um, so I picked up 
um, Horror Hound 101 when this dropped. I ordered it just right off the website. Um, this has a retrospective on Evil Dead 2. There's a great article on here going over the history of Wizard Video, which we all know was Charles, which Charles Bands. Um, so there's a an excellent kind of walk through history of there. Big, the introduction of big box VHS and really opened my eyes to. I, I always knew obviously how influential Charles Band was and how innovative he was when it comes to media marketing and the the VHS boom in horror. But that article really opened my eyes to some things I didn't even know about. Um, but the big thing in here is the letter to the editor, which talks about um, how Horror Hound is really going to be leaning into physical media coverage. They see the importance of it, and they're going to make a bigger effort to cover physical media and the importance of it and kind of highlight um, us, the collectors, and the market and talk about the labels and the effort that they're putting in. So really cool stuff coming from Horror Hound. Um, I can't wait for issue 102 already, but if you haven't picked this up yet, I think this is, what, $9.99. I did see it at my local Barnes & Noble after I bought it. I ordered off the website. It was like, I don't know, 12 bucks or something. So great, great read here, especially if you're an Evil Dead fan, because the retrospective so far have been great, and the next issue is on Army of Darkness. So they're going to be continuing, continuing with that franchise there. Okay, so that's what I've been reading. <laughs> Been doing a lot more of that recently. I'm very happy to. But on to um, a couple of movie pickups. Nothing crazy. Nothing like out of control. Um, but first, we did pick up Immaculate, of course, as everybody else did. And I'm glad they did. Love that choice for cover art, too. This is out from Neon. There is the back there. I actually haven't even, haven't even opened my copy yet. But this is... Uh, we missed this in theaters. We rented it on VOD. Loved it, so I pre-ordered it. Um, I'm really interested to not only watch it again, but I do want to watch it again with the commentary by Michael Mohan, who is the director here. I'm really interested to watch that. Um, if you haven't seen Immaculate yet, yeah, don't let... I, I feel like some people I've talked to, they're like, it's the Sydney Sweeney thing. Like, they just, they're not interested, or, or they don't think a horror film with Sydney Sweeney is worth all the praise that it's been getting from everybody. Um, but I've encouraged a couple people to take the time to check this out because it was it was great. I loved it. It's only I think in ninety minutes. It's a very quick breeze. It may it might even be 89, 89 minutes. So it's a really quick breeze. Super effective. The ending is fantastic. Her performance is great. Good visuals here. Great directing. Um, it really kind of left a little bit of an impact, I think, on both Erica and I. So I needed to have in a collection at the time. That this shipped, it shipped at the lowest price, which was fourteen ninety nine at one point. So Neon did a great job here with this release. So definitely pick that up. Also have two. This one was really cool. This is uh, from Terror Vision. This is my first Terror Vision pickup, and this is uh, Linnea Quigley's Horror Workout. But uh, this is the new alternative slipcover that they recently released. Um, I was super bummed when I missed the first printing of this. Um, it was one of those things where I was like, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm going to pick that up. And then I didn't. And then it became really difficult to find. Um, the slipcover was going for a bunch of money. And, I'm, you know, while I do, I prefer to have a slip. I prefer to have the original release state of it. Um, I was like, yeah, yeah, one day. But it, it still bummed me out. And then the moment I saw the announcement with a new slip, I was like, I had to pick it up. And actually, believe it or not, I actually like this more than the first one. So it kind of worked out for the better. Let me show this off to you. So there is the front there. And this is all embossed. Great detail and texture on there. And then here is the back right there. So I love the colors. Love the presentation here. I'm happy that I ended up actually picking this up because <laughs> and then on the inside it's well it's the same as the original release so there's your front and there is the back so fantastic release from Terra Vision. i'm really happy that i actually so all these things were kind of worked out well that i missed that initial run because i'm happier to have this i know if i had bought that original one and i saw this game i would have been a little envious that i did pick up that original one so uh, that's not a common thing, though. I know Vinegar Syndrome does it sometimes. 
years later, um, they'll release alternative slip. That's what happened with me and uh, Tammy and the T Rex. I ended up getting the new slip cover because I didn't have one. Um, so it's not it's not all that common that this happens, um, but it does, and I'm very happy it did in this case. So Lay Quigley's horror workout in the collection. Everyone's been showing this one off, but this was super exciting to get in from A24. This is Love Lies Bleeding. This is the new film by Rose Glass. Let's just appreciate that front cover there real quick. And then here is the back. I have a couple of these, these uh, A24 style releases. You slide that out and this is the front of the fold. Ed Harris here on the back. And then this opens up. We have some art cards in here. I'll show you these. Or not art cards. These are more like postcards. You have Ed Harris. There is, um, oh my god, Dave Franco right there. Kristen Stewart. There you go. Very nice cards. Good card stock. Postcard quality going on here. So, just a nice addition to have. And they slide in real nicely here. I haven't had a problem with them sliding in or out yet. So, put that in there. And I did opt for, this came out in Blu-ray um, and 4K. I did opt for the Blu-ray over the 4K. So, here is your disc. Great pink disc there. Um, was very excited. Very excited to get this in. I was patiently waiting for an announcement. Um, I remember I watched... I watched St. Maud, which was Rose Glass's first film. Um, I watched it right around Christmas for the first time, and I absolutely loved it. Was kind of instantly anticipating what she was going to be doing next. Love Lies Bleeding got announced, so I'm very excited to watch this. Um, special edition. So we have filmmaker commentary with the director and the co-writer. We have two featurettes and then some behind the scenes uh, photography on here. So beautiful, uh, beautiful release from A24. I've seen some people complain about this style. Um, they've been doing this since they started releasing their stuff on physical media. They do these editions or they do the big tall editions like they did for Midsommar, The Lighthouse, uh, Last Black Man in San Francisco, The Green Knight. So all those people complaining have obviously never bought from A24 before, but that's okay. Super happy to add this into the collection as well. Very exciting one here. Um, this is from a company called Celluloid Dreams. They're a brand new boutique label. Um, this is the 4K of The Case of the Bloody Iris. Check that out. We'll flip this around. Here is the back. I know you can't see too much on there. Um, but this is the... I ordered it directly from the web store. My order came without a slip cover. I reached out to them um, and they were like, yeah, we'll get one out to you. So I'm just waiting for that to come in. But really, really, really cool new label. And I know that a ton of time went into putting this one out. A ton of research, really big rest or restoration efforts. Um, so this is a newly scanned, restored in 4K from the original negative. Uh, and on here we have original Italian opening credits. We have a featurette with George Hilton, a featurette with, I'm going to butcher the name, uh, Paola Quattrini, Drops of Giallo, featurette with Ernesto Gistaldi and Giuliano Carnameo. Uh, and then we have a commentary track by a film critic, Outtake Reel. Super cool release here. If we crack open this, we have kind of doing the arrow thing with the coming soon. And then on the back, we have some cast and restoration talk on here. I am going to do a longer video about this release. Um, so let's see. The release is transferred with scan 2023 at Cinema Communication Services uh, in Rome from the film's original two-perf technoscope camera negative in 4K on a pin-registered era scan. Uh, all of the restoration and color grading was performed at Celluloid, Celluloid Dream Studios in California. Um, special thanks, all kinds of stuff on here. So a ton of effort went into this release and very, very happy to support a new label making their way into um, into the space. And really cool too, along with this, were these massive lobby card recreations. These things are huge. 
Like, look at this. This is the size. This is, these things are massive. And I'm not going to show off all these. There's a handful of them here. Um, but these things are massive. The condition is absolutely immaculate. Like, the print quality is incredible. I just don't know for sure what I'm going to do with them yet. I don't really know where to put them or how to, <laughs> like, where to store them. Um, I might frame them and keep all of them in the frame, maybe occasionally swap it out. Um, but yeah, these things are, the print quality on these are excellent. So a great little um, bonus to give you when you order uh, directly on their website. So super cool there. And last but not least, I typically do, you guys know I do the Severin Showcase every month. I purchase the Severin bundle. I am terrified for July, by the way. Um, and I sit down, I watch everything I dive into, I make a video about it, I call it the Severin Showcase. It's great, it's wonderful. Um, for the most recent release, I just don't have the time to watch, to dive into this set like I want to, so I figured I would just tack it on to a collection update video. Um, but I did get in the Game of Clones. This is the Bruce Boitation Collection Volume 1. So there is the front cover there. Just trying to show off some of the gloss. And here is the back here. Already a contender for one of the best box sets of the year. We know how Severin does it. They crush it time and time again. This is a... Some stuff in the back. This is a seven disc collection. This is actually, this is the eight disc collection. If you order from the web store, uh, you get an eighth disc that includes two extra films. Um, so this includes 12 restored Bruce Potation classics, plus the documentary, Enter the Clones of Bruce, which I did watch, that was excellent. Uh, a hundred page book full of essays, posters, rare photos, and over 23 combined hours of special features. So this thing is an, an absolute beast to try to get through. But uh, if you're not familiar with how Severin does their box sets. This slides out like this. We have our book. Nice thick book here. There is your front. Doo -doo. There is the back. And then I don't really know how to show off you know, the books too well. But yeah, I think you get the idea there. And then you have your uh, discs housed in the in here in the little cardboard and then for each disc it pops open and they give you kind of a breakdown of features and stuff like that so let's let's go through here and see what's in here real quick uh one thing that's really cool about this is that each movie actually contains something called uh severance kung fu theater um you can choose to watch it separately or you can choose to have it be the beginning of the disc but it's sort of like um what were those called? I remember back in the day when like you would have a host who would kind of like talk about the movie and then lead into the introduction. That's what this is here. So each one has most of these, I think, have the um, Michael Worth, but each movie kind of brings in somebody different or might have somebody different. Um, so first up, you have Enter the Clones of Bruce. This comes with a bunch of bonus features. Disc two, we have the Clones of Bruce Lee and Enter Three Dragons. Disc three is Enter the Game of Death. Goodbye, Bruce Lee. His last game of death is set. It just makes me laugh. Um, the Dragon Lives Again. Bruce and the Iron Finger. We have Challenge of the Tiger. Cameroon Connection. Super Dragon. The Bruce Lee Story. The Dragon Lives. And then your final disc, The Dragon, the Hero, and Rage of the Dragon. And then in the back here is the Web Store exclusive disc. And on this disc, we have, it just comes in this little sleeve. We have the Big Boss Part 2 and the Black Dragon versus the Yellow Tiger. Let's see if that focuses. So, nice extra disc there to have, a nice little bonus. Um, I did start this set, so I watched um, Enter the Clones of Bruce. This is not my wheelhouse. I don't know much um, about Bruce Boitation. In fact, I know... Almost nothing. Actually, I feel a little bit better now that I watched the, the documentary, which was great. Um, but still absolutely blind going into this set and uh, a little intimidated by it. But that's okay. That's okay. We learn. So that slides in there like that. We just close this up. And it goes back in the box. So maybe one day after I tear through this whole entire box, I'll do a, a longer, you know, 
think of each one. But if you are interested in kind of like my thoughts on these, I'm no longer on my letterbox going to be doing ratings. Um, I, I'm kind of tired of like wrecking my mind about ratings. So I'm just, I'm just going to be logging what I watch on there. Um, and then my list that I do, anytime I do box sets or, or series or franchises or anything, they're just going to go by favorite to least favorite um, and not attached by like, oh, this is a five star versus a one star. I don't want to do that any longer. Um, so I will be, ha I will have a, um, a list on there started once I dive in because I'm not going to include um, the Enter the Clones documentary in that list. I don't want to put that up against all these, you know, crazy Bruce Blitation movies. So I might just put it first as like a, hey, I did watch this. Um, but then the ranking will go from there. So good release from Severin. Already one of the best boxes of the year put out. So, and that's pretty much it. I mean, really, really cool stuff coming out. Um, I have picked up some little, you know, odd and end stuff, but nothing that, you know, I really felt the need to, to come on here and talk about. Um, again, I will leave a link down below for Brian Berry's book, Hooker Masker and Trash City. <sighs> Next video, I have a really fun thing planned. Um, we're going to be diving into and discussing a... A fun double feature. It's going to be we're going to be talking about uh, Paul Morrissey's Blood for Dracula and Flesh for Frankenstein. So, as you can imagine, I am neck deep in research on those, getting ready to talk about those for that video. But as always, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. If you don't already, follow me over on Instagram. That is the same name, Bearded Film Guy. Uh, we're making a ton of progress over there, just showing off cool stuff on there, and. Um, Outside of that, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my post-marriage week, and uh, I'll see you all later.